So I have a lot of friends who are sharing their ideas and theories on social media with respect to COVID-19 and its severity and some skepticism. And I wanted to share something as well. I have no expertise in virology or epidemiology. I study lizards, which are very different from viruses. Uh, but I do read a lot of science. That's what I do basically every day for my living. And so I did want to just share my perspective on things. Um, so again, I don't know anything about like mortality rate with viruses or any of the stats that a lot of people are throwing around um, with respect to some of these uh, parameters that are used in epidemiology. But I do know how to interpret data that is simple, such as data about death. And I'm not talking about like uh, the rate at which people are dying or uh, the reasons for people dying, just the most simple type of data you can calculate. How many people are dying, period. No cause involved, just how many people are dying. And what's interesting is there is a pattern that we see this year that's different than the patterns of the past years. I'm going to show a lot of, uh, or a few papers at the end of this video uh, and those references, but just to be brief, I'll show you the overall message here. So I, I do have one of the uh, cities kind of memorized just from recency looking at the chart, so I'll, I'll reference that city, and that's New York City. Now typically in New York City, um, in a calendar year, so we'll start in January, February, March, April, May, June, and we'll just go that far because that's as far as we have data for in 2020. Um, you see the death toll hover around 2,000, um, a little below, but we'll just say 2,000. And it'll drop off due to um, flu killing less people throughout the year. Well, let's say that that line that I've drawn right there is for like 2015. Um, you see that there are some fluctuations due to like randomness. Um, well, you see a similar pattern in like 2016 and something similar in 2017. Actually, 2017 had a, a bit of a severe flu. Um, so you see something more in 2017, similar in 2018, something like that in 2019. Um, the last decade and, and beyond, you've seen basically very similar numbers when it, it, with respect to raw deaths. This is just the number of people are, who are dying. And I'm talking here about New York City. So you can take this data and you can make a prediction about a coming year. So uh, before 2020, there were predictions made about how many people would die in New York City in 2020. And using this data and some predictions with like what the flu season is gonna look like, um, you can say, okay, well, I think this is about how many people are going to die, give or take. You know, there's confidence in over there. What's interesting is in 2020, it looks nothing like that. It's actually more like this. So there is a huge increase in deaths from what was predicted to what was actually seen. And this value here is actually around 8,000. So that's an increase in 300%. 200, 400 would be 100, 600 would be 200, 800 would be 300%. So what is causing that? And I haven't even mentioned COVID. All I'm asking is, ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué es tu colchita? So what is causing this increase here? Um, I haven't even mentioned COVID. I'm just talking about the raw numbers. And I would like you to write maybe in the comments or tell your friend what you think is causing that, that 300% increase. This is raw death data. This isn't data that's manipulated by the government. It is, okay, this person died. Let's write it down and send it to the government. Deaths aren't being made up. They aren't saying, oh, let's just make up you know, Frank Jurowitz, write down his name, he died. That's not happening. Um, so there's a lot of skepticism with regard to, oh, like this guy died of a heart attack, Frank died of a heart attack, let's write down COVID. 
I, maybe that is happening, but take that out of the picture. Just look at this raw data. What is causing all these deaths? When you do incorporate the COVID data, um, it looks something like this. It's still below this huge increase. So even when you're like, okay, well, let's see how many people have died of COVID. There's still this additional number that we don't know why they're dying. Um, if we look at the year and what's going on, uh, you could start to come up with some hypotheses. Maybe it's because there's no MLB season and a lot of people are dying from sadness. Maybe it's from stress of homeschooling their children and people are going, you know, losing their minds. Um, I think that there's a little bit more of a logical reason. Uh, there's a virus that has actually directly killed people. And there are some instances where we don't necessarily know that that's been the cause of somebody's death. So another way you could look at this data, if this was like one plot, just in case it's confusing. So down here, um, we could plot this similarly, but we could go, okay, well, here's your data for 20, you know, like 2018. Here's 2019. That's the whole calendar year, whole calendar year. And then boom, 2020. So what is causing, what is causing that increase? Um, that would be the question I would like to, to pose to you. Um, so I'll, I'll show you some of the uh, papers that I used. All right, so this first paper is published in JAMA Letters, which is a big medical journal. Uh, and it's a study that looks at the number of deaths um, and excess deaths. Uh, in places throughout the United States. So I think this first table is good to look at. Uh, you can look at, so for example, here's New York City, the number of expected deaths uh, from March 1st through April 25th is 8,000. So again, my plot was over a great period of time um, and showing, it was, it's like a, a histogram basically. This is if you took all of those numbers and squished them together. So you expect to see about 8,000 people die, and here's the confidence interval. So that's um, the true value is somewhere between 8,300 and 8,400. Well, here's how many people actually died in that time period, close to 30,000. Uh, and if you subtract this value from this value, you get your excess deaths. So 21,000 more people died than was expected and your confidence interval hovers just around 21,000. Um, that, that's a big number. That is three times how many people were expected to die is how many more people than were expected to die actually died. So you can also look at this in um, plot forms, the last plot I showed, uh, just looking at 2019 and then 2020. So this first chart is showing heart disease, the number of people who died from heart disease in a few different places. Uh, throughout 2019, you can see that hovers around a mortality rate of um, 30 per, I think this per uh, 100,000, and that jumps 60%, close to 70%. Um, and then you see the same thing with diabetes. So it hovers around uh, three people dying per 100,000, that jumps, uh, that jumps over 100%. Um, cerebral vascular disease has a smaller spike, but still a jump. And same with Alzheimer's disease, there's a jump there. So let's look at another study. This is one published in JAMA Internal Medicine by a different lab, different group of authors. Um, they collect data again, um, but they, they analyze it a different way. They analyze it similar to the first plot I showed where they predict the expected number of deaths based on previous years, and then plot the actual number of deaths, and you can see this huge difference. And in the blue area here, those are the number of deaths that are attributed to COVID. So there's still an excess number of, um, a, a ton of deaths that aren't attributed to COVID. Um, and again, my question to you would be, what else explains this if COVID is a hoax, if it's not that big a deal, if we don't need to worry about it? Um, so this is looking across the whole U.S. in this plot. So we go from under 60,000 deaths uh, at the peak of 
uh, COVID, which it's interesting that this, the, the huge number of excess deaths corresponds with the peak of COVID, um, too close to 80,000 deaths across the US. Um, and then this gets broken down in a few different places, New York State, New York City, um, and you could take their data and make your own plots if you wanted to um, from this table, which is a similar table to the other study I showed. Um, so if we look at another paper, this is an older one. Those last two I showed were just published this month. Um, this one here was published, I think, uh, oh, May. So this was taking data from Italy, which had a different peak uh, in March rather than April. And here you see a, um, another huge jump in the number of deaths compared to previous years. So 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, boom. 2020, we see a huge jump in the number of deaths. And all of these plots have the same y-axis. So there aren't, there's no, uh, no manipulation of the data going on here. Um, so you can look these, these papers over if you'd like to. I think they're um, really informative. Uh, if you don't really like reading scientific papers, the Wall Street Journal did an independent study that was very similar, uh, if it will load. looking at um, so the average between uh, from 2015 to 2019 is shown in the dotted lines um, the number of deaths attributed to COVID are shown with the red line and then all the deaths are shown with the blue line um, and this is looking at uh, the, the calendar week so again, you see a huge spike uh, here in the UK over uh, the previous years around week you know, 13 through week 19. Same with New York City. Um, and they give uh, a lot of, or a few different um, regions where you can look at these. I think it's US, UK, Netherlands, and Belgium. Um, if you wanna see a, a greater extent of localities where this type of data is collected, the New York Times, did a study um, looking across a bunch of different countries. So here we have the UK, the US, Italy, Spain, and you can see the same exact trends, expected number of deaths in 2020, and a huge increase compared to that expected number of deaths right around when COVID peaked. Um, so in the US, this, this is kind of older here. This is, well, no, this is new, July 9th. The Wall Street Journal one is a little bit older. It's from May 28th. Um, It'll be interesting to see what this looks like as the U.S. continues to increase in case numbers and the death toll lags behind. So one more thing I'd just like to mention, I know this is a really long video, but uh, a lot of people are saying, well, if it's so deadly and we saw a bunch of deaths at first, now there's a bunch more cases in the U.S., why aren't there a bunch of deaths? And what they don't realize is the case numbers, if this is number of deaths, the cases, come before the deaths. People don't get COVID and die right away. Sometimes it takes weeks. So the case numbers were live behind the deaths. So now that cases are starting to increase again, they started increasing in June, um, mid-June, I guess, you'll start to see the deaths increase. Um, if I'm wrong here, which I would be happy to be wrong, then um, come back and call me out on it. Uh, but we are already starting to see a little bit of a jump. It might not be as bad as it was because we do have a better idea of how to care for people with this um, virus or with COVID-19, the disease caused by the virus. Uh, and we have more equipment, we're a little bit better prepared. So we might not see as, as severe a, a response. But uh, anyway, those, that's my two cents. Um, I'm sure there are gonna be a lot of colorful comments in uh, the comments section. So I encourage everybody to be civil and kind and remember that uh, things can be, become very aggressive when read over the barrier of the internet. So try to think about you are, uh, the fact that you are talking about to a human um, with feelings before saying something very braiding. <laughs>